love this question because this is where the juice is. There are so many exciting things that you can do that can either build arousal towards penetration, allow you to explore each other's bodies and figure out what feels good for both of you. If you have a sex life that's just focused on penetration, that's going to get really old real fast. Look into his eyes. They're the eyes of a man obsessed by sex. Eyes that mock our sacred institutions. Bedroom eyes, they call them in a bygone day. You're listening to Sex with Emily. I'm Dr. Emily, and I'm here to help you prioritize your pleasure and liberate the conversation around sex. On today's show, I'm answering all of your pressing calls from the Sex with Emily hotline. We get into so many topics, like how to really start enjoying receiving oral sex, ways to spice up your honeymoon and make it extra memorable, what to do if you aren't getting as wet as you're used to during sex, and how to explain that to a partner. Plus, new methods for giving oral sex to prevent discomfort. You know, a lot of times we get into positions during sex and we actually experience pain. Remember, you can call me anytime and leave a voicemail, 559-TALK-SEX or 559-825-5739. I love these hotline shows. It is my joy. It is what I love doing. And I hope you will all check out our hotline and set up a time so we can chat. All right, Intentions with Emily. Join me in setting an intention for this show. When you're listening, what do you want to get out of the episode? My intention is just to be there for you, my listeners, who have been supporting the show for almost 16 years, and thank you for being part of this community. Here's a suggestion for your intention, that you're going to think of one challenge in your sex life right now that you're thinking you'd like to tackle, and then you're going to call our hotline and leave a message. And remember to rate the podcast, review, I love when you do that. It helps keep the show free. It makes it easier to find for everybody. So if you just take a minute right now, wherever you're listening, whatever platform, and you rate it, you review it, you subscribe, I so appreciate you. Thank you. Also, our website. There's a new Ask Emily. What's the deal with foot fetishes? What is the deal? Check it out. We have so many great articles on our site. And remember, call my hotline with questions, but you can also message me, sexwithemily.com slash askemily. All right, everybody, enjoy this episode. My first caller is Katie, 26, who wants to know how she can learn to enjoy receiving oral sex. Hi, Katie. I just got back into the dating world, going out, very confident, having sex. But one thing I have never really enjoyed was receiving oral sex. Okay. I love to give it. I feel comfortable in my body. But again, I don't really enjoy it, but I want to. So I'm trying to figure out, like, what can I be doing maybe to find it more pleasurable? Okay, so that's such a great question, Katie. Do you have pleasure in other ways? Do you have orgasms through? Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't have any problems, like, receiving orgasms, which is great because I know a lot of people can struggle with that. Yeah. Um, You know, I like foreplay. But I can say that when receiving oral sex, I don't have any orgasms. So I kind of feel like maybe it's just pointless in a sense. Well, there's many women that I found in my career, they're able to orgasm through penetration and oral sex feels uncomfortable to them. Yeah, And so that's, maybe that's, that's right. you. Okay. So that might be you, Katie. Maybe there's nothing you're doing okay. wrong. I'm telling you, it's this weird, like it has to do with our anatomy and the way we mm. were, the way we're born. It's literally how close your clitoris is to your vaginal opening. It's all legit science. So I think that could be it. So I'm not going to force you to do anything that you don't want to do, but maybe there's a way that your partner, because some partners really enjoy performing yeah. oral. And that's so funny. It's like, oh, it's like, because it's rare. I mean, I hear from women exactly. like you. Exactly. Super rare. I never hear about it. You know, people don't, maybe don't like giving, but I'm over here on the receiving end and I'm like, I'm just not crazy about it. <laughs> that could be why. That could be it. But how you can make it more pleasurable is maybe you want a finger inside you, or maybe you want them to use a toy yeah. on you while they're also going down on you. So, I so kind of experiment with it. Yes, experiment with it and make it work for you. Like if they're just like licking in ways that don't feel good. I mean, it really is a practice. I wouldn't have known when I was May- first. Yeah, maybe the guy doesn't know what he's doing. I don't know. He probably <laughs> doesn't. Katie, mm-hmm. no one knows what they're doing. I'm telling you, I, I mean, even people who are experienced, let's say every every time you've got a vulva in front of you, it's different. 
we're all like snowflakes. We're all different. So, and you're 26 years old. I don't know how old the guys you're dating, but they just don't have as much experience. But even again, I always say this, but guys in their forties also sometimes don't have as much experience. So every time you're with a new partner is a great time to let them know explore what you like. That, Amy. Yes. Mm-hmm. Explore together. Let them know what you're into, what feels good. And then take it from there. That's what I would recommend, okay. but you're not broken. There's nothing wrong with you, but thank you. you you'll <laughs> find, you'll find, that. yes, absolutely. This is a, um, uh, I hear this all the time. So just, yeah, learning it, be honest with them and tell them that that's what you heard from sex with Emily. And exactly. That's what I will say. I'll be like, listen, sex with Emily. Yeah. She knows. (laughs) She knows what's up and then explore with them. Okay, Katie. Yeah. Emily, thank you so much. I appreciate you. And I love your podcast. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks, Katie. You too. Bye. Bye. I do get this question from time to time that there are different kinds of vulva owners. Some just don't want to receive oral because they have shame about their body or they don't think their partner wants to be doing it or they don't know how to relax into it. But again, there are these women that they have very sensitive clitorises. They can have the orgasm during penetration, but it's just that oral sex doesn't feel as great to them. So nothing wrong with you if this is happening. So yeah, so figure out which kind of Volvo owner you are. Now, if you're the one who has the shame around it and all that, that's something that I would definitely work on by getting comfortable with your body, taking baby steps with a partner, letting them know that maybe you're not as comfortable with it and what would feel good to you. And you know, all of this is very helpful when you have a healthy masturbation practice to understand your body and what feels good so you can explain that to a partner. Next up, we've got Ari, who's 32, and she's trying to spice up her upcoming wedding night, but there's a twist. They can't have penetrative sex. Hey, Ari. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm just on my break at work. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So my fiance and I are getting married August 28th, so really soon. And my fiance is waiting to get a kidney transplant. Mm -hmm. which I'm super thankful for. It's going really well. He's in as good of health as he can be. So I'm really grateful, but I'm a little nervous about our wedding night because a lot of the meds he's on just don't allow like sexual activity to always happen. And at first it was really hard for me to overcome and accept the change in our sex life. And now like two and a half years into this, we're in a good place about it. But, um, you know, there's like a lot of pressure around the wedding night. And prior to this big change in his health, we're very sexually active couple and we make it happen when we can. Um, but a lot of the meds he's on just, it just doesn't always allow it to happen. Right. And so I'm just kind of wondering like some tips and tricks to still have like a, an intimate night together. If it just can't happen, does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Well, congratulations, first Thank of all. Thank you. Um, yeah, I totally get that. I mean, that makes sense. And really, it's about connection that mm-hmm. night. And so when you talk about like the adventurous sex you had in the past, like what do you miss? Because I'm trying to think if I could give you some ideas that could sort of simulate that even if he isn't able to. Is Can he not get an erection? And there's yeah. no penetration? Okay. That kind of thing. Like he all right. feels the urge, his body chemistry just isn't allowing it to happen. Okay. You could give each other massages. You could get some really beautiful massage candles and you could light it and give him a massage. He can give you a massage just to get into your bodies after what will probably be a beautiful but maybe stressful, tiring day of having a wedding. And so I love massage candles because they just, you know, I've talked about them in the show before, but there are some great ones. We have like Good Vibration sells them on our site. Those are awesome. Um, you could play some games. There's some great sex games also. Like there's some question and answer games, Mm -hmm. you know, that could kind of lead to other sexual activities. You could use some toys. Have you used toys together yet? We have used toys together. I think that like, as we're talking, I guess what I'm finding I'm a little more concerned about is how to make it, if he can't have an erection, how to make it an intimate, positive experience for him. Because I feel like I feel like I'm always getting taken care of right now, which I am not complaining about. But on our wedding night, I kind of want it to be like a both of us thing, even if sex can't happen. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. What about, have you ever tried anal play on him? A, like, mm, yes, like during oral sex. Okay, well, maybe you could, I mean, since you can't have oral sex, I mean, I would recommend getting like 
I mean, it is anal August. Getting a butt plug, or there's like a great, um, B Vibe makes this great beginner anal kit, and it's a beautiful kit that has great tips about anal sex, and it's like builds up from different butt plugs from different sizes. Maybe you could, if you'd be willing to experiment with something like that, I mean, he probably could still feel pleasure in his prostate and if you yeah. can't get an erection. And so that could be, I know that's a lot on the wedding night. Maybe you'd have to no, clear it with him beforehand, but that, that could be really fun. I like the idea of a massage. I don't want him to get like frustrated through sex if he can't get hard, but I'm just thinking body touch sensations, kissing, like slowing everything down, mm-hmm. spending a lot of time touching different parts of his body. Yeah. And I think that like spending time, like slowing down, touching part of his body is like a really good suggestion. Literally every night since we've started staying the night together three, four years ago, it's always, will you tickle my back or like every single night. And I love touch. So I always say yes. So maybe like, I like the idea of the massage candle, maybe just like switching up how we massage and touch before bed is a really good yeah idea. i think that's great and you you could also get there's some great touch if you're into touch there's some great they're like finger caps you put on your fingers and they have these little uh pointers on them so they're like like nails that you put oh. on yourself oh I and think- you could scratch yeah. himself with them and you could just kind of like use this so you could give him a really special massage where he's just maybe you put a blindfold on him and he's on his stomach and then you could mm-hmm. play with the warmth of the massage candle you could use these little finger caps that you put on with like little nails you could even use a toy on his back i mean i love the fin it's called the fin by dame and it's like my new like go to because it's a finger vibe but you put it on your finger and that means your whole body becomes like a vibrate like anywhere you touch on his mm-hmm. body because your finger can go in places. So you could even just use right. that on the massage oil. <laughs> and it's just a really cute vibe. Comes in a great box. He could use it on you. You could use it on him. And it's just, it's super cool. I love all their products are just like very innovative. So I mm-hmm. think that that if he likes tickling his back, just to kind of expand that and just be about like worshiping his body everywhere that feels good right now for him. Yeah. So okay. sensations are great. Playing with ice too, like having some ice cubes by the bed. Oh, and also system, now that we're talking, I'm like, I want to play on this for you. System Joe makes some warming products and some cooling products. They have like a cooling lube and a warming lube. But I think they even have it for massage too. So you could just kind of even, you can you touch his penis still? Yes. Can he feel oh, anything? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, good. Because that might feel, again, I'm thinking about sensations that might feel good without the pressure to like have an erection, but just to kind of please him. Mm-hmm. So usually, you know, temperature play is what I'm talking about and just yeah. playing with him. And you could even get a feather, you know, a necklace you could drag mm-hmm. on his back. Like there's just, just sensations and just giving him a really special massage, get some of his favorite foods, play some music and set the mood okay. or something yeah. that makes you feel sexy. Do a little strip. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. All right. Congratulations. And Thank you. have fun. Have fun Thank with it. You. I think he's going to be so happy that you thought about this ahead of time. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. It was so nice you're to so talk welcome. with you. You're so welcome. Of I course. I appreciate it. Bye. Bye. I love this question because even if you're not getting married and trying to create a special night or one of you are unable to have penetration right now, to have penetrative sex, this is where the juice is. There are so many exciting things that you can do that can either build arousal towards penetration, allow you to explore each other's bodies and figure out what feels good for both of you. And so I just think that making this kind of play part of your relationship is the thing that's going to keep it interesting and hot. If you have a sex life that's just focused on penetration, that's going to get really old real fast. My next caller is Liz, 25, who's got some oral questions. Hello. Hi, Liz. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for for calling in. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Of course. Thank you for doing what you do. Yes. Okay. So tell me what's going on. Yeah. So my boyfriend has been sort of noticing and complaining about having like a swollen tongue after oral sex, okay. like the next day, um, which of course like deters him from, you know, wanting to do it because it's kind of painful for him. Um, and I guess I was just wondering like, is that a normal thing? Do other people have that? Like what the heck is it? Okay. Well, how long have you guys been together? We've been together for four years. Okay. And it happens every time? Yeah. Okay. You know, are they little, does he get sores or it gets swollen? What does it look like? Yeah. It's like, it like, 
it's not sores, like it's not an STD or anything like that, but um, it's just like the bottom of his tongue is swollen. Okay. Okay. I mean, there could be, is he going very hard? Or, like, is he using a lot of pressure? I guess. Yes. Okay. Cause my first thing was like, it could be an STD. Like it could be something right. like that. So I would definitely get you both tested. I know you've been together for four years, but hopefully you get tested and you know that it's not that because you can yeah. get some kind of, you know, it could be a yeast infection, syphilis or gonorrhea. You can take antibiotics to treat those. But have you also asked him, I know you guys have been together four years. Has it ever happened with another partner? Does it ever happen when he eats certain foods? Because like sometimes I eat acidic foods and my tongue swells. Like I'll have or lots, lots of fruit. I think that I have asked him if it has happened with people in the past. And I think that it has. I'm not sure about food though. I don't okay. think so. Now what it looks like to me because obviously, you know, I went on it <laughs> a whole rabbit hole. <laughs> of course. You know, I'm not trying to hate on him, but yeah. his bottom teeth are like a little crooked. And so it kind of looks like the part of his tongue that's like connected to the mouth. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It kind of looks like it like gets caught in his teeth. Oh, you know? yeah. It's like that. It's not like. Oh. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. So it's like getting, he's like, uh, and then this. Yeah. Right. So that's getting caught. It is teeth that makes so much sense. That's what I think, right? Now, obviously, I thought I was going crazy, so I wasn't sure, but... Do you like the way he's going down on you? Like, does it feel good? Yes. Okay, so I would say that he could find a position where he's minimizing this this pressure because he could, if he's leaning more forward, like if you're lying flat on the bed, if you're like lying on the edge of the bed and he could be down and like on his knees or you could elevate in some way with like a wedge underneath you. So he's not like in between your legs and he's not like going up and out, but you know, maybe you're standing like to me, he's just, it's a position thing or get his teeth yeah. fixed. But I'm wondering if he could even put this bite sound silly, but I remember when I had braces, there was like wax you could put in your teeth. Oh so God, the braces yeah. didn't hurt. No, I totally... It totally it, sounds like he's cutting out his teeth, especially because you're showing me it's the bottom of his tongue. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's no. what I would recommend. And get tested. I know you've been together for a long time, but I would say that that would be something to get tested for. But if it's that same part, that's probably what it is. You already know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So okay. positioning, you could be at the edge of the bed. He could kneel in front of you. You could put your feet on his shoulders too, so he could you're more elevated. Okay. So yeah, he's yeah, not, yeah. I don't know what position he's in now, but whatever he's doing, it's just like, he's applying too much pressure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Okay, good, Liz. So that's, yeah. we got that out of the way. So what else? Just kind of like a follow-up that it's, it, you know, it takes me like a pretty long time to like have an orgasm, which then also contributes to like him going down on me for, you know, for what seems like forever. Um, how long is it? Do you know? Do you ever look at the clock? No, it, it feels like 45 minutes, but that could just be a total. I could just be making that up. Okay. Well, I mean, the thing is it takes women about between 20 and 40 minutes to orgasm. So that's common. Oh. And that's why also that's, but he sounds like he's very uh, motivated and very driven. So he's just going at it and he's hurting himself. So also <laughs> he could take a breath. Maybe there's some breathing you could do together. He could stop. He could go back to it. Maybe you go down on him and he comes, it doesn't have to be the straightforward 40 minutes, but yeah, that's, that's how long it can take. And yeah, I love that okay. he's willing to go the distance, but having that tongue swell thing is not, is not ideal. So yeah, I think no, just I talking to him about it and finding a position, like you could even play with positions, be like, let's try to find before you settle in, let's make you comfortable here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause honestly, it's just pretty like standard positioning and then, and then exactly what you're saying. Like we're just doing it for like the whole time straight and not really, you know, right. adding any. Yeah. And he's like super driven to do it. I love that he's going at it for, for a long time, but that's yeah. what we need. You know, that's yeah. that is what a lot of us need. So yeah. Let me know how that goes. Positioning, maybe yeah. something in his teeth, a little wax. Perfect. Thanks Liz. Cool. I so appreciate you. Thanks for yeah, calling I in. I appreciate you. Yeah. This was so fun. I agree. Keep me posted. I will. Okay. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, Liz. Bye. Bye. I love when these questions come in about positioning because that's really what it is. You know, sometimes we just get so caught up in the moment and then we're like, oh my God, my neck hurts. My elbow hurts. You know, we, my foot fell asleep. We don't have to be uncomfortable when we're having sex. So sometimes props, using a wedge, using a pillow, and just stopping for a minute and saying, like, this is about being embodied and knowing what is feeling good and what's happening in your body in any moment. And so 
finding ways to get into comfortable positions for both of you. This is part of what makes sex fun. It's kind of fun and playful to say, I'm not that comfortable. You know, let me take a move here. Let me, let me grab a pillow. I think that we're so sometimes afraid to talk about sex that we just think we have to suffer through the weird parts or suffer through like being uncomfortable or hurting ourselves. But there's a lot of great workarounds using pillows or wedges or sitting on the couch instead of on the bed or standing instead of sitting. So think about ways that you can improve positions or sex acts that you're doing right now just by a little switch of, you know, moving your legs or moving your body. Sometimes there's like quick fixes that can really help in the long term. I'm going to take a quick break to hear from our sponsors, but after I talk to Jessica, who's 22, and she's dealing with some dryness during sex. Well, I'm here to help. I'll be right back. I've got Jessica, 22. She's got questions about dryness. Hi, Jessica. Hello. Hi, Jessica. How are you? Hi, Emily. I look so crazy. I'm a graduate student, so I'm like midterm season. Oh my God. Totally looking crazy. Congratulations. Uh, (laughs) Grad school. That's exciting. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So tell me what's going on. Basically, I am in a re- I've been in a relationship for about three years now with my boyfriend, and the whole relationship, honestly, I'm like, like so chill. He's like my best friend, two peas in a pod. Um, I did lose my virginity to him, and he is a little bit older than me, so you know he was really respectful about it, and you know, kind of coached me through everything, but. It's kind of gotten to a point a little bit where it's okay. Now we're trying to work towards a connection and I still don't really know what to do. Like, I feel like I want him and I'm like, I feel like I am a very sexual person, but then it like comes to actually doing something. And I'm like, like, I get so awkward. And, you know, recently too, I've been dealing with, this is like TMI, but it's, I got to tell no. you, it's basically yeast infections. And so okay. I, it's been causing the vaginal dryness for like, since the beginning of this year, he's been going through some stress at work on top of that. I'm going through my graduate school stress. And so I feel like all of that combined, he didn't know that I was like having the yeast infection. So, you know, in the bedroom, he was kind of like, why am I not turning her on? And I should have explained that to him. Yeah. So now it's kind of gotten to a point where he's like, Jess, I really want to have a connection with you. But like, I don't know if it's your personality or like, like, I feel like sexually we're not connecting. I feel like that's really important in a relationship. And I'm like, yeah, I agree. Thousand percent. Like, I think that's important too. But obviously I'm dealing with the infection. It's clearing up now, but now I'm kind of just like, how do I, cause now it's kind of getting awkward. You know, it's just like, I get really nervous now. I'm not as confident in bed now with him. Like, okay. It just feel, and then I tried to like spice things up and, you know, I went to, I went and got like the silk ropes. I was like, oh, maybe you could tie me up. We could switch it up. And he's like, oh no, like I want more of a connection. I'm not like the type to do that, you know? Okay. And I was like, yeah, maybe you could like talk me through it more. He's like, okay. Like I tried to talk about it outside of the bedroom and be like, hey, you know, what do you like? And he kind of was like, no, 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 we'll do that inside the bedroom. So it's kind of like at that stage and I'm like, this is, I feel like it's so fixable and I'm like, this is so frustrating because it's such a good relationship and it's like, this can't possibly be like the... Right. There's always going to be something in in, in a long-term relationship. So you've been together three years, so you're right where you need to be. There's always going to be something. And usually a lot of times it has to do with sex. So, and you're 22, right? Yes. And how old is he? He is 27. Okay. Okay. And so when you say that you start, so you've been together three years, how we, did you feel that at the beginning you were more confident? Um, you know, it was still the beginning. I had, again, I did lose my virginity to him. I like grew up in a really strict household on top of that. Like I, so I was like nose in the books. I, I feel like even in high school, like I went to an all girls Catholic school. Like right. I did not, I really didn't have like the freedom to, ex- I don't know if that's important. Like at that age, you're supposed to explore, but yeah. I was like, nose in the books, like didn't really have any experience except like making out with people. That was it, you know? Of course. No. And then you've been with him for a year since you graduated, essentially a year after you graduated. So so I would first say, go easy on yourself. There's no way that you would know what to do if you haven't, he's your first partner and it's been three years and you're like, okay, we've done all the things now, like now what? So I do think it's something that I would love him to feel comfortable talking to you about it outside the bedroom. I get that he wasn't because for most, 
he probably doesn't know what to say either. So I recommend like finding some tools. Like, you know what? I, I don't know if you guys would be into this, but Valesa is they make this like ethical porn. It's like porn that is really like hot for all genders and it shows real body types. It's super sexy. At the name ethical and porn makes it sound not hot. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. maybe you guys could watch some stuff together like and say like, oh, that's hot. That's not hot. Like just this is where I love porn, especially porn that, I know that many vulva owners are like, oh, that's really hot. There's like more romance. There's a plot. There's mm-hmm. more. And you just might need some more like data. You might need some more external information. I mean, I love that you listen to the podcast. I think like porn that's done right could be a great tool for you. And talking about, I mean, he probably doesn't know either, even if he's a few years older. I mean, yeah. probably his first really long-term serious relationship. He hasn't been experimenting and so even if you say to him, like, what are the three most memorable times we've had sex? And then you answer and he answers, you're going to find there's some really great sort of sexual DNA in there. Like he's going to tell yeah. you like, oh, it was that time that, you know, you came home and surprised me and did something or was that unexpected time? You'll start to hear patterns. And then you can mm-hmm. think about it for you too. Like when were you the most turned on? But I think if you can get him to agree that you're both exploring and learning and growing together and it's something that you I mean if this is someone you're going to be with it's really important for couples to have a growth mindset around sex and to agree that it's something that they're going to prioritize and talk about because you don't yeah. have to fix it all on your own and it sounds like a lot with like stress and your catholic upbringing and yeast infections yeah <laughs> it's also and I feel bad because I also like I feel like it was kind of my fault because I didn't explain to him like what was going on because also as a woman I just didn't want to be like you got yeast infection I don't really know why I'm super clean. Like I don't, you know, but like I have to sit and be like, it's not you, you know? And I feel like it, that was really hard for him to wrap his mind around because he had convinced himself so much. Like, Uh, we just don't have information. The thing is, and now, you know, like, I think maybe when I was your age, I I might not have said I need infection. I'm like, that's so not sexy. But now as you get older, like every guy, many guys I know have been with women who get yeast infections or bladder infections, UTIs, yeah. which sounds sexier than a yeast infection, but it's all <laughs> the same thing, right? Um, so I just think this is a learning experience for you, Jessica. And this is your first serious relationship and first relationship, it sounds like, mm-hmm. with sex. So you're exactly where you need to be. And I would just recommend, really, like, it's okay. And I know that you feel bad, but it's not your 50% of the relationship. And so I don't know how else to convince them. Like, the fact that you're dry, it could be the yeast infection. It could just be, like, are you on the birth control pill or anything? No, no, no. It it, it genuinely was. I was going to, like, this male gynecologist. He treated me like a number, so he wasn't treating it well. And then, but now I've got a good guy now, so. Good, good. So that's what you need. And then, you know, always use lube, too. You know how I feel about lube. Just use lube every time. And I know, I get he's probably not going to understand that because so many penis owners think that if you have to use lube or the partner's not wet, it has to do with them. But I am telling you, it is not related. Of course, you're turned on and into him. But it sounds yeah. like he needs, maybe you guys could listen to the show together. You could call back in together. We could do a session. But I think that, you know, making sure that you're also comfortable, like, are you having orgasms on your own? Are you masturbating? Are you doing things that keep yeah, you? Yeah, see, that's, that's also another thing is there's only one way I can make myself orgasm. That's it. Okay. And I'm like, is that an issue too? Like, is that, like, there's only one, one way, but I'm like, there's different positions that we do in the bed. Like it's, you know, what's that so, position? Is it during penetration? Oh no. It's just like clitoral stimulation. That's it. And if it's like one, one position and I'm like, is that a bad thing? No. Like, do I need to explore it? Like, it's like, is it a muscle? Is it like- well, it does help. All of that helps. Anything that we can do to pay attention to our pelvic floor, that's literally you're strengthening your pelvic floor, which is important, but it's the muscles that are responsible for orgasm. Yeah. So if you're doing kegels or you're masturbating or you're like exploring and maybe you're slowing things down. I mean, I think that sometimes we, yeah, we do. There's nothing wrong with me. I love that you can orgasm with one position. I mean, only 20% of women can orgasm during penetration. So the yeah. fact that you even have one position, I want to like tell you that that's, that's great. Like that's more than, than many women. So there's nothing wrong with that. But I just think Jessica, it's about playing, maybe sometimes taking sex off the table and not making it just about penetration. Because that's how you learn about what feels good to you. And mm-hmm. sometimes with his mouth or fingers or using toys together. And also that's just like, it's something new. So if the same yeah. positions after three years is getting boring, I'll bet you could probably find other positions that would allow you to have pleasure and orgasms, but it's just like exploring together. 
yeah. and just yeah, yeah, yeah. finding new positions, using his hands, using lube. But you're both learning together. And I'm yeah. not saying that, but that's what it is. There's no problems here. No. Okay. The, uh, okay. <laughs> it makes me feel better, you know, but the doctor was like, try to not have intercourse. Just, you're going to, you're going to bug it. Good. Just knock it out. And so I'm like, okay. So I told him and he's very respectful of these things. So like, I was like, okay, maybe like in these 14 days, I can, we can explore new things without like going yes. all the way just, just for these 14 days. And he was like, okay, I just really hope it gets fixed soon. And it's just kind of like, <laughs> well, you have to learn that that could be really, really hot. Like just like making out, giving each other a massage, teasing. I mean, mm. so many women, like if your clitoris, I know he said don't have sex, but what if he touches you all around yeah. your clitoris and, and you tease together and you play together, you know, give each other massages. Like, I just think that that's a great idea. But again, he just probably hasn't been in relationships or situations where someone said that to him and he's all about the penetration. Yeah, that's what I think too. Like he definitely wasn't a, he also wasn't a long-term serious relationship before me. So I'm like, you know, maybe like, I really don't think, I don't like to think about like the past as much, but I'm like, okay, maybe like for her, it was just easier and she didn't deal with most of these things. And, you know, like now I'm here and it's like all very new to me, you know? I, yeah, I would try to not do that as much as you can to think about the past. And she was a yeah. great lover because he's not with her anymore. Yeah, I would just try to like ex talk to him about, again, it's really is more about talking and seeing if he is someone who's comfortable talking about sex. It's a practice. And if he's never done it, I get why he's saying no, or that's weird. But like, that's, yeah. that sounds like something that you want and you need. Like, yeah, that's, yeah. and we all need it. So it's making it safe and comfortable for him. Are there things that you've been wanting to try in the bedroom? Do you have any fantasies or things that are interesting to you? I do agree. Like within the three years, it has been a lot more like routine now, you know? And I'm sure that's like a part of it. And he is like super stressed. So I'm like, I don't want to, you know, but no, now it's like, no, it's I want you to thing. be more dominant. Like, I don't want to just be in the bed. And I, you know, I try to tell him that, but it's kind of like, oh, I'm tired. You know, it's, it's, right. it's kind of like that, that phase, you know, where it's just like, I'm tired. You're like, okay. You know? Right. It, right. Exactly. That is the phase that you're in. But that's something that this is what happens. And so many couples like, oh, it's a phase and we're not going to deal with it now. But if you're into being more dominant, sometimes guys don't really know what that means or how to do it. So like reading erotica together or listening mm -hmm. to erotica, like try Quinn or finding, you can even find scenes that you think are hot and show him so he knows. And this notion that we all think that sex is supposed to be great all the time. I used to think in my 20s too, like if I was with someone for two years, I would say it started to get boring of two and a half years and I would just end it because I just thought that that means that we're not supposed to be together. I didn't know. I didn't have the information yeah. I had now. So what I'm telling you is this is exactly what happens. This is what happens in every relationship. And so how are you guys going to problem solve together? It's okay not to know, but finding information and, and educating yourselves together and finding different things that are hot, doing our yes, no, maybe list on our website, which you can download for free, it has all these okay. sex acts on it. It has like 79 different sex things. It's like kissing and spanking and oh, we need that <laughs> right and because 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 i try to give people information because you guys how would you even know what's on the menu we're just yeah, like this yeah, is all i know thing. you don't know what's that's on the, the menu thing. that's why i'm telling you like you guys could do it as a date night one night and say okay when you come over we're going to do this thing and you can print it out or you could do it online and just say like which one of these is hot for you what's the memorable time yeah. you've had sex and just because what we're missing in long-term relationships is because when we become so close to someone, think about it, like think of a fire. Fire requires air, right? Oxygen to keep it going. And mm -hmm. if you're so close with someone, right, you sort of, you don't, you have that lack of oxygen. You can't create that passion and that heat anymore. So what we crave in relationships is a little bit of space. That's what the air comes in, but also variety, novelty. It's something mm -hmm. new. So it's like even talking about it can be a great turn on, can enhance arousal. And then finding different tools. So doing the yes, no, maybe list, like thinking about different ways and positions and places you could have sex, things that you can wear, things that you can act out. That's why people do it. It doesn't mean that relationship is broken. It just means that everything gets a little boring after a while. Everything gets stale. Yeah. We do the same exercise over and over again. You know, we can we become stagnant in our in our growth, our body, if we're trying to like build muscle, like you do the same exercise, you know, it, you plateau, you plateau. So you're almost, you're almost like I've plateaued, 
but that's not a problem. The thing you have to do is both agree that you want to find a solution together and how, and you present it this way, Jessica, like, oh, I'm so excited. Like, let's explore together. Let's figure out what's hot for us. Like sucks with Emily said that she's got this yes, no, maybe list. Or let's each go to her website and pull out an article that we want to read to each other. Cause there's so many great articles on the site about every topic you can imagine. So you might have to drive it, like bring the fodder. But once most guys try this, I believe that they're like, they realize it's not about them being bad lovers. You're not saying you want to break up with them. You're not saying the relationship's doomed. It's like, I yeah. just want to work together. And here's yeah. some yeah. stimuli to keep it going. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Literally, a breath of fresh air. This was perfect. Seriously, thank you so much. And honestly, like, thank you for creating a space, especially for people like me who, like, came with this such strict upbringing, like, only till marriage. You know what I mean? It's yes. Like, it's not the same anymore. Everyone's different, obviously, you know, to each their own. But like, seriously, thank you for creating a space like this. Like, it is to my just pleasure. talk about things. And thank you for being brave enough to call in and for sharing your story. There are so many people in your boat and your story will absolutely help them and resonate. So thank you. All righty. Okay, talk Have to a you good soon. Day. Keep me posted. <laughs> Bye, Jessica. Bye. Bye. Okay, so Jessica brings up a lot of great points. You know, first of all, a lot of us grew up in homes where it wasn't, celebrated to be sexual. It wasn't okay to be sexual. You know, she explained that she went to Catholic high school. So that's something that we constantly have to look at and say, do those messages still serve me? Obviously not, because Jessica's decided that she wants to be sexual outside of marriage. It's really about finding a partner that has a growth mindset around sex, somebody that is is that is interested in learning and growing and not giving up. Like I love I I could see Jessica's frustration. I could hear it. She's a fixer. But remember there's two of you in the relationship and you both need to work on it together. And what a great time to find out before you get married, before you commit for life, is your partner into prioritizing your sex life. Because I promise you, no matter what stage you're at your relationship, there will come a time when there's going to be something that you need to work on. And what a great way to find out if your partner is game. Talking about it. Communication is a lubrication. After the break, I talked to Daniel, who's wondering whether to try to fix things or get divorced from his high school sweetheart. Don't go anywhere. My next caller is Daniel, 24 in Texas, and it looks like Daniel's got some issues communicating with his wife. Hey, Daniel, what's going on? Okay, where do I begin? Me and my fiance are in a really bad spot right now. Like, it's on the verge of like ending, and we've been together for seven years. We have three kids, and you know, like when it's good, it's good, but when it's bad, it's bad. You know. I feel like it's reaching its breaking point, but, you know, I've been with us, like, we got together when we were high school, you know, like, I'm only 24. Mm, Okay, yeah, you, okay, yeah, and three kids, three kids. Yeah, one boy and two girls. Okay, so what's going on, I mean, that's, yeah, you've been together, you grew up together, essentially, so what's going on now? Um, like, I moved out of my mom's house when I was 17, and since then, I've been with her, and We've lived together, but I've never actually been on my own. And like, I don't know if I should keep trying with her because neither one of us, like we both want to try, but neither one of us is like really sure it's worth it. And if it Mm. doesn't work out, then I don't know what to do with like myself. Yeah. I mean, Daniel, how are you guys going to work on it? I think therapy would be great for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're going to be together for a life because you have three kids. So you're going to be either co-parenting as separated or married. And I can't tell you how much I I highly recommend it. You just need an out. You've been together seven years and you need an outside mediator essentially to kind of help you develop new tools. I would find a marriage and family therapist in your area. Do you have health insurance? Uh, Yes. That is the first thing you need. And you guys need to commit to it. Like it's your, you know, like it's feeding time for the kids. I mean, like it's, it's everything because I mean, obviously, I'm sure you are frustrated having three kids under the age of 24 and it's your first, both of your first relationships. So I hear what you're saying is, what are you going to do? And I think that we would cross that bridge when we come to it. But the fact that you both still want to make it work and you can't do it on your own, which I'm telling you, you won't be able to do it on your own. To commit to help, it doesn't mean you're crazy. doesn't mean you're wrong. It means that I recommend that every couple needs it especially after seven years and what you guys have been through. You're young. You've got your whole life ahead of you. You're going to learn 
great tools. And then if you're with a therapist, and I mean, I believe that couples shouldn't break up until they go to therapy because, you know, sometimes it can help. And sometimes you just realize we're not compatible. But right now you're probably having the same arguments over and over again. It's not even about what you're arguing about. Because what happens after so much time together is that resentments build up. It might sound like it's about you working too much or her doing something, but it's not really about that. It's about other things that just pile up over time that we don't take care of. Yeah, like I was thinking to myself the other day that we may have confused uh, chemistry for compatibility because we have great chemistry. But like in the beginning, like we could almost finish each other's sentences, didn't have to say anything because we already knew what the other was thinking. And now it's like we disagree on everything. We can't find a happy medium. I don't. What kind of things are you disagreeing on? finances like how to deal with the kids like my son starts school this year and like how we're just gonna make it all work and not go crazy it sounds like you guys just have a lot a lot going on right now that's and now she's working so you know i can see why there's probably a lot of challenges maybe you're not compatible but it's so hard to know when there's so much responsibility together to care for you know, children and finances and you don't have a lot of world experience, either being with other people or just living life. So it's a lot at once. And and all couples go through really hard times where they think they weren't gonna make it. No couple is happy all of the time through the all their years. It's the couples yeah. who can get past these times, you know, that that make it or at least find out that they can't, but you you won't be able to do it just arguing back and forth yeah and like we've we've tried like thought about like okay like what if we just take a break from each other you know just like get some space have our personal time but like we live in the same apartment so and we can't really afford to have two places so we yeah. can't really get away from each other and it's starting to impact our sex life a little bit i'm sure yeah. No, that's really, especially during the pandemic, you guys were locked down together with kids. I mean, that's just not easy. How old are your kids? I'm curious. Uh, my son just turned four. My oldest daughter just turned two. And this month on the 20th, my youngest daughter will be one. Okay. Four, two, and one. that's really young kids. It's a lot of responsibility. So yeah, yeah. Daniel, this is just if you can just kind of get some time to think and figure out a plan. And I think talking to, would she be open to going to therapy? She actually suggested it earlier today. Great. I mean, I'm telling you, Daniel, it, it, it's just like, it's a game changer. You will be so much further along a month from now after say four sessions than you are right now. Yeah. I've, I've, I'm going to have to do that. I've always been like really hard headed and oh, I don't you know need to hear what a therapist has to say, but. But you wanted to talk to me. So I thank you for being open to talking to someone because I get that whole like being hard headed and I don't need anybody, but that's not going to serve you. And so it's better to find that out at 24 than to be 44 and still being in the same place you are. Because believe me, I talk to a lot of 44 year old men who say that too, and it's not going well. Okay. uh, One more question. She had had told me that she thinks one of the main reasons we're having problems is because we never we never took the time to be able to stand on our own as individuals before standing together. Mm. And in doing that, we kind of uh, handicapped ourselves by if we split, then we can't really stand on our own yet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if we should if it's too late to take the time to do that or if we should roll with it and see where it Mm. goes. Well, that's a good point. I mean, it is true, but there is something called like healthy interdependence or healthy dependence on each other where you can both grow within a relationship, but it doesn't sound like you have the space to do that right now. And I do think that there's a lot to be said for figuring out who you are on your own, but you also have kids right now Because I I agree with her that you haven't had a lot of time alone, but you can still create independence in a relationship. But I just think it'll be hard for you right now with the situation you're in. Oh, it's very hard. Yeah, it sounds really hard, Daniel. You know, but you're going to get through this. And I love that you're calling in. And I do think these are all great things to bring up in therapy. How do you still grow and figure out who you are outside of the relationship 
when you're in a relationship. It doesn't always mean separation. It just takes maturity and talking it through and being really honest and open and being able to listen. Yeah, I'm going to try that because, like, you know how they say history repeats itself? Like, yes. My parents, they split when I was about two. Mm. And my mom moved to Corpus Christi. My dad stayed in Houston. And I would go back and forth every year. And I was talking to uh, Frankie's my fiance's name. I was talking to Frankie. And she said that if we did split, then she was going to go back to Sinton. And I was like, that sounds just like my childhood. My parents split mm. when I was a baby. and move to different cities and yeah history does repeat itself it's true you know so how do you stop the cycle i think it's by learning how to communicate and learning how to problem solve together and learning how to be really good partners to each other learning how to care for other people and still keep your independence which is a practice and at 24 i didn't know how to do that it's not easy so yeah i get it you don't want to be going back and forth. But I mean, I love that you're asking these questions now because I'm telling you so many people just keep repeating things from the past without ever looking at it. This could start you on a great journey. It's good to start now. And hopefully you guys can, by having an outsider help you, you'll be able to hear a different perspective that you can both kind of come together on and have different conversations that aren't the same. Because I'm assuming you're having the same conversations right now, you know, and that's not going anywhere. So, except for like, we should separate, which maybe you should, but we won't really know yet. But I see not wanting to repeat that. Yeah, of course. So what can you do differently now? It doesn't have to repeat itself. The fact that you have that awareness is really great. Well, uh, yeah, I'll definitely take your advice and talk to her and see yeah. about going to a therapist and if that doesn't work and take it from her. Yeah, let me know. You can reach out again. We could do another call. If she wants to come on the call with you, we could do one together. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've told her about your podcast. I showed it to her. She, she was uh, really interested. Okay, good. Daniel, just keep me posted, okay? You got All this. Right, we'll it's really responsible, and I'm here for you. Thank you, Emily. Okay, have you. a good day. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Yeah, you guys, you know, I know that I often talk about couples going into therapy together, but we all need help outside sometimes. It's really young to get married and to have kids and to try to problem solve and they have to be everything to each other right now. And as we know, that's just a challenge in relationships. So listen, a lot of your health insurance plans will cover you going to therapy. And I think it's just a really important next step. And I'm going to reiterate what I said, that if you are thinking of just leaving somebody and you have kids, remember, you're still going to be in each other's lives forever. So you might as well figure out how to be effective communicators for the long term. That's it for today's episode. Thanks for listening to Sex with Emily. Be sure to like, subscribe, and give us a review wherever you listen to podcasts and share this with a friend or a partner. Believe me, if you got something out of this, they will too. We release two to three episodes a week. Find me on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. It's all at Sex with Emily. If you want to ask me a question about sex, dating, or relationships, you can email me feedback at sexwithemily.com or sexwithemily.com slash askemily. And check out my website. We have so many articles on there helping you better sex. And you can check out our guides at sexwithemily.com slash guides for free guides that will give you expansive tips and activities. Sign up for our weekly emails because, hey, I've been told I give really good emails. Was it good for you? Email me, feedback at sexwithemily.com. Emily.com.